Dear fellow turntablists, after scratching for many years only with vinyl, I decided to finally buy a Pioneer DJM S9 and to try out Serato. Unfortunately, the joy was only short-lived. I did not manage to perform fast and clean chirps, even when setting the latency to a minimum of one millisecond. With vinyl, there was no problem at all. Therefore, I decided to actually measure the latency of Serato DJ Pro. I did this by recording simultaneously the timecode from the turntable as well as a timecode output of Serato. Here is the setup. The turntable is connected to the Vestax mixer at the top. Its only purpose is to convert the phono signal from the turntable into two stereo line outputs. One goes into the line input of the S9 and provides the timecode for Serato. For this, Serato needs to be in CDJ mode with a timecode file loaded for playback. So Serato also outputs a timecode signal. The second output of the Vestax mixer goes directly into my multi-channel audio interface. The output of the S9, which is provided by Serato, is also recorded by the audio interface. Serato runs on a mid-2011 MacBook Air. This is a rather old laptop, but there is no audio clicks or pops even at the lowest latency setting of one millisecond. The test works as follows. I start the record and perform fast backward tears twice. <coughs> The latency in Serato is set to 1 millisecond. Then I repeat the same test for 2 milliseconds. <coughs> 5 milliseconds. <coughs> and 10 milliseconds. <coughs> In addition to that, I also perform a control where I switch the two recorded outputs. This is to make sure that the audio interface does not introduce a bias. Now that we have the two stereo recordings, let's open them in the audio editor Audacity. The top two tracks are the direct turntable signal, while the bottom two are the output of Serato and you can see the five tests. If I zoom into this part here where the record played without interruption, you can see that the frequency of the timecode is 1000 Hz. At a sample rate of 44.1 kHz, this is 44 samples. You can also see the shift between the left and the right channel by one fourth of the period. So everything seems to be okay. Now, if we move to the part with the backward tiers, we should be able to see the delay between the two recordings. Already by eye, you can see that the delay between the two tracks is far greater than one millisecond. One millisecond would be 44 samples, but the difference here is closer to 700 or 800 samples. This is more than 15 times as much. Using the cross-correlation function in the programming language R, I calculated the latency in all the five tests. Here is a figure that summarizes the results. You can see that even when setting the latency in Serato to one millisecond, the actual latency is 15 milliseconds. And this of course gets worse when increasing the latency. For each test, I perform two backward tiers, so there are two bars per test. The last column shows the result of the channel swap at one millisecond. You would expect a negative number with a magnitude similar to the regular one millisecond test. And this is what you see. So let me summarize the outcome of this experiment. I get a minimum latency of 15 milliseconds, even when setting the latency in Serato to one millisecond. 15 milliseconds is not acceptable for scratching. 4 milliseconds would probably be okay. This means that for me Serato is useless, I still need to keep scratching with vinyl. You might wonder, how is it then possible that so many turntablists perform so well with Serato? I guess they adapted slightly to the delay and learned to compensate. But this means of course that you cannot switch between Serato and vinyl, and this is not an option for me. 
Serato's been a great disappointment for me to say the least, in particular because I haven't seen this mentioned anywhere by the developers. If I would have known the true latency, of course I would have never considered Serato in the first place. I suspect that this issue is also present for others, but of course I don't know. I would be extremely curious to see results from other people. You don't need necessarily a 4-channel audio interface to perform the test, you can also just record the two left channels of the direct and the Serato signal using a single stereo track. This brings me to the end of the video. If you want to add to this discussion, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.